Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kodrowski and this organic chemistry video will cover the stereochemistry of the SN1 mechanism. SN1 reactions as stereogenic centers give mixtures of stereoisomers. To illustrate this, we're going to use this tertiary alkyl bromide shown here. This species has a stereogenic center, carbon indicated by a star. It has four different groups attached, which makes it a stereogenic center. And in the first step, the leaving group leaves. When it does, it generates the following carbocation. Notice this carbocation is planar, and the carbon no longer has four groups attached. That means it's no longer a stereogenic center, and the molecule has changed significantly. This carbocation is flat in the vicinity of the carbocation, there's an upper face, which has half of a p-lobe here, and there's a lower face, which has the other half of the p-lobe here. These two faces are what is going to be accessible to the nucleophile. So when nucleophile attacks the carbocation, it has two options. It can either attack the top face or the bottom face. Let's consider what top face attack would look like first. The nucleophile attacks the carbocation from the top face, and when it does, R3, R2, and R1 are all going to bend down towards the lower part of the screen to try to get out of the way of the approaching nucleophile and to reestablish the tetrahedral structure of the atom with four different groups, like this. Now now we have four groups again, we have a stereogenic center again, and it is formed with a particular configuration. If the nucleophile were to attack from the bottom face, we'd get the following result. The R groups 1, 2, and 3 would now bend towards the upper part of the screen, trying to get out of the way of the approaching nucleophile, and that would give the following stereochemical result. Notice that these two structures are mirror images of each other. If you imagine a mirror here, the upper and lower species are reflections of each other. When the upper species is deprotonated, it gives the following neutral molecule, and this is described as a retention product. The reason it's known as retention is the stereochemistry is exactly the same as the starting material. Take a look at this structure and then compare it to the starting materials. These two molecules are exactly the same, except that the nucleophile here has replaced bromine. The other product is an acid base product shown here. When the bottom species is deprotonated, the result is the following neutral product that has a different stereochemical configuration at the stereogenic center. This is called the inversion product because it has opposite configuration from the starting material at the stereogenic center. This species doesn't look exactly like starting material. It has the same connectivity, but an opposite configuration at carbon. The leaving group has left and the nucleophile has replaced it from the opposite face. This slide covers another example for additional practice. Here, we have a tertiary alkyl chloride. It forms a carbocation intermediate, which is flat and has two faces, a top face and a bottom face that are both open for attack by a nucleophile. In this case, the nucleophile is gonna be water. Water can approach an attack from the top face, and when it does, the nucleophile comes in, approaches and makes a bond to that face. That gives this product. If attack were to occur from the bottom face, the following result would happen. Nucleophile comes in and makes a bond there, which gives the following product. Deprotonation of the top product results in the following neutral alcohol species, in addition to an acid base product. This is the retention product. It has the same configuration as the starting material. The OH group simply took the position of the chloride. There was no inversion of configuration at the stereogenic center in this product. When the lower product is deprotonated, it gives the following neutral product. Additionally, there's an acid base product that's produced. This is the inversion product because it has the opposite configuration from the starting material at the stereogenic center here. Notice the OH group has the opposite configuration of the leaving group in the starting material. If you imagine a mirror plane shown by this dotted line here, the upper structure and the lower structure are reflections of each other. They're a pair of mirror image molecules and they happen to be different. This is a pair of enantiomers and they are produced in equal amounts. So the retention and inversion products are enantiomers. They're produced in equal amounts. And when you have that situation where you have an equal mixture of enantiomers, you have a racemic mixture. On this next slide, we're going to take a look at an SN1 reaction with stereochemistry where the leaving group is on a wedged bond. The alkyl halide has a chlorine that's wedged, pointing out of the screen towards you. This is a slightly different perspective from what we had in the previous questions where the leaving group was in the plane. Here the leaving group is pointing out towards you. The first step is the leaving group leaves, and that gives a carbocation. It's shown here from a top perspective where we're looking down on the trigonal planar geometry of the carbocation, and all of these groups are in the plane. The nucleophile in this case is going to be ethanol. And ethanol has two options. It can either attack from the top face or the bottom face. We're going to look at top face attack first. When the nucleophile attacks from the top face, it gets delivered with a wedged bond orientation. The result is the following intermediate. 
When the nucleophile attacks from the bottom face, the result is opposite. The nucleophile is delivered with a wedged bond orientation. The result is two products that are mirror images of each other. When the top product is deprotonated, the resulting neutral species is shown here along with an acid base product. This is the retention product. It's called retention because the nucleophile was delivered from the same face as where the leaving group left from. In the starting material, the chlorine is on a wedge bond, and in the product, the nucleophile is on a wedge bond as well. In the lower example, when the lower product is deprotonated, the result is a neutral organic product along with an acid base product. This species is called the inversion product. It's inversion because the nucleophile here has the opposite configuration of where the leaving group was in the starting material. The leaving group in the starting material is wedged. Here the nucleophile comes in as a dash. In this case, these are non-superimposable mirror image molecules. This represents a pair of enantiomers. And when the enantiomers are produced in equal amounts as they are in this reaction, that's called a racemic mixture. This is a common theme in SN1 mechanisms, especially when you have one stereogenic center in the molecule. Racemic mixtures result. Things get a little bit more complicated when you have multiple stereogenic centers, and that's what we're going to look at in the next slide. In this example, we have an alkyl halide that has two stereogenic centers. One of the stereogenic centers is where the chlorine is attached. This has got the R configuration. The other stereogenic center is here. It has the R configuration. It's just a point in the molecule that is away from where the reaction is going to happen. The leaving group leaves in the first step, and that gives a carbocation that's planar at the spot where the leaving group left from. So there are two faces to this molecule. There's a top face and a bottom face. If the nucleophile were to attack from the top face, the result would be it gets delivered as a wedge bond orientation. That's shown here. So it comes in as a wedge. Notice though that the stereogenic center at the other part of the molecule doesn't change. So that's an important thing. There's only change at the spot where the reaction is occurring. Similarly, with bottom face attack, the nucleophile is delivered with a dashed bond orientation. And so that gives the product shown here where the nucleophile is delivered with a dash. Deprotonation of the upper product results in a neutral species that has the following configuration. It's R at the stereogenic center that reacted, and the unreacting, the spot that doesn't react, retains the R configuration, and there's an acid base product. This is the retention product because stereochemistry was retained at the center that reacted. Deprotonation of the lower structure gives a neutral organic species shown here where the stereogenic center the reaction occurred at has the S configuration and the R configuration is retained at the other stereogenic center and there's an acid base product. This is called the inversion product because the stereogenic center where the reaction occurred has an opposite configuration of where it started from. These molecules are not mirror images of each other so this does not give a pair of enantiomers. These are actually diastereomers. This is pretty obvious when you look at the R and S configuration. Here we have in the upper product an RR configuration, and in the lower product we have an SR configuration. Enantiomers have opposite configurations at every stereogenic center. Clearly these are not enantiomers. These diastereomers are not produced in equal amounts because the faces of the carbocation are different. Here, the top face approach is hindered by a methyl group, whereas the bottom face approach only has a hydrogen to deal with. That would potentially lead to different amounts of each diastereomer being produced.